So, fellers, there are two things I do on a somewhat regular basis in life that make my brain want to crawl into the corner, shrivel up, and die. One of them is cutting compound angles on a miter saw. Ugh. The second is rewrapping my mind around crank timing in relationship to cam timing, how that all works, and then how I need to adjust the valve train accordingly. But if we just slow down, consider the things we do know, it's not that difficult. First of all, when you install the cam, you've got the two timing marks on the crank and the cam. When they are lined up, you know that number one cylinder is at top dead center and it is ready to fire. Okay? Now here's a bit of information, you can just take it to the bank and cash it. Every time, every time this timing mark is in line with zero, the number one piston is at the top of its travel. Incidentally, on the Chevy 6's, number one piston and number six piston are parallel. So they are both at the top of the travel at the same time with the timing mark at zero. It just has to be. There is no other way about it. It just has to be. So you can have it lined up. You can crank on this sucker till doomsday. Line that thing back up. Number one, top of its travel. Now there are two options for what's going on when this is lined up. Either it's at the top of compression stroke and it's firing, which is where you want it to be when you're setting the distributor, or it's at the top of its exhaust stroke, and the intake valve is just opening to bring in fresh air-fuel mixture. But no matter how you slice it, if these two are lined up, this piston is at the top of its travel. It just has to be. So I have my timing mark lined up with zero, so at zero degrees, the spark plug on number one is firing. Now, this pulley will cross this point twice for every four cycles of this cylinder. Four cycle engine, so it goes down, up, down, up for every complete cycle. So that means this timing mark will cross once and the cylinder will be at top dead center again pushing out the exhaust it will not be firing the next time this is at zero pushing out the exhaust the intake valve is ready to open to pull new fuel mixture in so this timing mark lines up to zero twice for every four complete cycles of this one cylinder now let's suppose that unlike this project, you're not pulling the engine out of the car, you don't know where the timing marks are, if you still have the distributor in, turn it to the mark, and if the rotor is pointing to number one, you know top dead center on number one and it's ready to fire. Or technically it is already firing, but anyway, if your distributor is out in the car, the engines in the car. Um, one of my favorite tricks was I had a plastic cap kind of shaped like a bullet cartridge um, that fit snug down in the spark plug hole but there was a lip around the outside so it couldn't fall in and I would bump the starter until there was a loud pop and that thing went flying across the shop and usually hit the wall and I had to look for it but that told me I had compression and that cylinder was at top dead center and then I would line that mark exactly up with our timing marks um, they do make whistles that you can stick in the spark plug hole and when there's compression in the cylinder it'll whistle at you um, you can spin it by hand with a compression tester and when you see that number climbing you know you're on compression stroke 
There are a number of ways you can do that and they all boil down to as this timing mark is approaching your tab do you have compression in the cylinder or not? If not, you're one turn off and you just need to go one more turn. Both your valves will be uh, closed so your hydraulic lifters will be all the way down. Um, clear as mud? Good. Now on a Chevy V8 if you look in the manual on adjusting the valve lash you put it at top dead center number one and you can adjust half the valves across the engine and you do it one revolution so number six is at firing top dead center firing and you adjust the other half of the valves across the engine and they're particular valves not just one bank or the other you have to get the right cylinders and the right valves but on an inline six the manual say take the cap off the distributor and at number one top dead center your rotor will be pointing to number one and you adjust the valves at number one then you turn the crank until the rotor is pointing at the next terminal which in this firing order is number five and you adjust the valves on number five cylinder and you go around the distributor and according to the firing order you adjust that cylinder to me that seems while it's possible um, it seems a little finicky with the cap being off you would have to somehow mark the distributor body and then you could do it but I didn't want to install the distributor before I get the engine in the engine bay anyway so what's a better way to do it? Well we do know we have a six cylinder engine and that this pulley is going to do two complete revolutions for every single four stroke of the piston, right? Are you with me? This mark will cross this zero two times to complete every four cycle of the piston. So let's say this mark goes around one turn. Number one is at top dead center just gotten rid of the exhaust. If you divide the circumference or by degrees this pulley by three, one has fired, five has fired, three has fired. 153624 is the firing order of this engine. 153. Number one is at top dead center of the exhaust. So another revolution has to happen before we get back to this point. So then 624. And at that point, this will be back to top dead center, zero degrees. Number one is ready to fire. So you could do it by angles, but in order to mark this pulley, I take a flexible tape and I get our circumference, and in this case it's 21 and a quarter. So we divide that by three, you have a little bit over seven inches, about seven and uh, five thirty seconds. So I mark this pulley, have one mark, and then I marked about uh, 330 seconds, 7 and 330 seconds over here, and then another 7 and 330 seconds over here. And that'll be close enough to adjust our valves. So the third mark is down on the bottom, I won't show you that, but this is the second mark. And if all this seems too confusing, don't worry about it. Just get the circumference of your pulley and divide it by three. Okay, in the video that I just uploaded before this one, I adjusted the valve lash on number one cylinder. Our timing mark is at zero degrees, top dead center. Okay, and I'll say it again. By the time 
our number one top dead center gets around one time, three of our cylinders have had fired. One, five, and three. So looking at the front, the engine turns clockwise. The distributor turns clockwise as well. If you're in the driver's seat, it'll be turning counterclockwise. So I'm going to turn this to our next notch, or our next line, top dead center, right there. So that's a little over seven inches from our timing mark. And that means number five is firing. So now we're going to adjust number five cylinder. I'm going to run these nuts down. They're just at the top of the threads. And this is my method for a, a small block as well. You want to make sure they're seated. They're not bound up anywhere crooked. And just between thumb and finger, you want to spin them. They should spin nice and free. You can see everything's loose. And then just want to find the point where they just start to have tension on them from the lifter. And that's right there. You can back it off again. Well, you can back it off again and just go back and forth a little bit. And then once you're satisfied that it's starting to have spring tension on it, give it one revolution. Do the same thing again on the other valve. Okay, just hit some tension, so we'll back it off. You now find your own method, find what you're comfortable with. Okay, it just doesn't want to spin as free in your fingers. I go round once. And we're good to go. Now we're going to hit our third mark. Oh. oh, those new rings, I tell you. Okay, number three is ready to fire. Now I know that engine rotation, crank and cam timing, valve train adjustment, these are the far more confusing concepts there are to engine building. So I'm just trying to think of anything that might be beneficial to, to a fella there. And just as a proof of fury, we're going to watch and make sure my lifters are doing what they're supposed to be doing. I've got my crank. Um, I've got my timing marks at top dead center on number one. So it has just fired. Okay, so I'm going to turn my cr crank in direction of rotation that the engine runs with. Both are closed. B 
because it has just exploded and it's on the power stroke down. So the first thing you should see happen is the exhaust valve is going to open. So when this is coming back up, it's going to get rid of those spent gases. So watch here. This should come up as I turn. And there it goes. So that's coming up. Piston's coming up, getting rid of the exhaust. The next thing that's going to happen at the top of its travel, the intake is going to open. Exhaust is going to close. Intake is going to open. So as the piston goes back down, it'll be sucking in fresh air fuel mixture. So I can feel the exhaust closing. And the intake is going up. Take us closed so it's building compression. And I'm back to where we originally started with our timing mark. <clears throat> now that we've gone and done things the hard way and moved this six times to show you the relationship of the crank to the cam and the valve train. There is an easier way where you start at top dead center, you adjust certain valves, you do one turn, so number six is at top dead center, ready to fire, and you adjust the rest of the valves. Here's a chart to show you what valves to adjust when. Go ahead and print that off or jot that down and that is just about it I hope it was helpful hope it was clear um, if this stuff ever is really clear um, join me for the rest of this project thanks for watching okay brain I'm gonna come dust you off now come here